Cultural Anthropology, AN 2210. This is the online Plymouth State University course in anthropology. I am your professor, Jason S.R. Paling. Uh, for those who are Plymouth State University students, hi. Uh, for those who are from NCC, National Community College, hello as well. And for anybody that's out there taking the class online through the universities, welcome to Cultural Anthropology and Introduction. Um, what we're going to do today, this is the intro uh, video to the class. We're going to go over the syllabus, we're going to talk about the course and the objectives of the course, the course competencies, what you're going to get out of the course, and uh, finally we'll go over the calendar and how the, the class is going to proceed online. This is my first time instructing a course like this online, so the course will change over the next couple of uh, semesters, so we're going to work out the bugs together. This is summer session one. We are using Moodle. You'll find the syllabus on a link on our Moodle webpage. Let me go over some important information. Again, my office hours will be every day from 12 to 1 online. You can get hold of me through my email account, the, P the Plymouth State email account, or my Gmail account, which is on the top of your syllabus. I prefer that you use my Plymouth State uh, email but you can certainly get hold of me through my Gmail account, which is jpaling at gmail.com. You'll also see that I've included my cell phone, telephone number on the syllabus. Now, this is for only emergencies, uh, in case you have an issue that you can't turn in an assignment or that you've uh, missed a video or you can't access your, uh, our cultural anthropology account. My cell phone number is not to give me a call up on a Friday night, uh, to let me know that there's a party going on. I appreciate it, I still like to party, but this is only for emergency. So please uh, call me or use my cell phone number if it is an emergency regarding the class and not the wicked pisser that you're going to. All right, again, office hours from 12 to one or by appointment. All right, getting back to the syllabus, uh, culture anthropology, is a discipline that seeks to understand the human experience through scientific, uh, social scientific investigations of cultures around the world. Uh, this course offers tools for making sense of the experiences of people whose lives are different from the students' own lives, your own lives, as well as putting the students' familiar worlds into new perspectives. This course begins with a brief survey of the four major div divisions of anthropology, which include archaeology, uh, social, cultural, physical, and linguistics, and is followed by a comprehensive discussion of the concept of culture and its techno technological, economic, social, and ideological components. Um, please read the course objectives on your own. We'll go over them in class. Uh, please read the course objectives, the course expectations, the grading policy, and the calendar carefully so that you understand uh, what the course entitles and what is expected of you. Um, it's really important since this is an online class that you keep uh, current with the assignments and the readings and the videos or you get left behind. Again, it is a, a summer course and it is essential that you keep up with the reading since it's abbreviated and there's a lot of material squished into the few months that we have together. So again, make sure that you're up to speed and current with everything. So let's go over um, some of the general education requirements that are part of your syllabus. The general education requirement um, is something specific to Plymouth State University, but we'll go over it for the other students that are, that are taking this course that aren't part of PSU. The general education global awareness connections. Educated people are aware that human beings are interdependent members of a world community that there are both similarities and differences in societies and cultures of the world, and that the manners in which people live their lives need to be exactly alike, need not to be exactly alike, sorry. Students take a three credit global awareness or a GACO course, either with the major or not with their major, designed to expose them to an important social issues facing the world and to encourage them to develop the ability to appreciate and think about issues from different points of view. Global awareness courses such as this one focuses on the forces that have shaped people's cultures, nations, and regions of the world. 
They increase students' understanding of each person's positions, participation, obligations, and responsibilities within the world. Plymouth State University is commended. Um, excuse me. Say that again. Plymouth State University is committed to providing students with documented disabilities equal access to all university programs and facilities. If you think you have a disability requirement accommodation, you should immediately contact the PASS office in Lampson Library. Their number is 535-2270 to determine whether you are eligible for such accommodations. Academic accommodations will only be considered for students who have registered for, with the PASS office. If you have a letter of accommodation for the course, from the PASS office, please provide that to me with the information privately so that you and I can review these accommodations. So again, please, if you have a PASS, um, please send that to me or notify me through email um, and we can accommodate you. Okay. The course competencies for cultural anthropology are as follows. And you can follow along with your syllabus. Again, uh, please refer to your syllabus for information regarding how the class is structured and what the class objectives are. Um, and often cases, students take a course and they look back and they say, what did, what did I learn from that class? You know, why did I take that class? Well, I'm gonna go over the course competencies. There are, excuse me, 12 course competencies. These course competencies correspond to the lectures that we're gonna give. So, after each lecture, you can go back and look at the course competencies and say, hey, that's exactly what I learned. So let's go over the course competencies for this class. At the end of the course, students will be able to, one, describe the scope of anthropology, explain the four subfields of anthropology, distinguish cultural relative, relative, distinguish, distinguish cultural relativism, and identify applied anthropology. Two, the student will be able to define the concept of culture, explain how it is learned and transmitted, explain in what ways culture is based on symbols and how cultures change. Three, understand how important cultural traditions are in shaping identity and behavior. Four, apply a cross-cultural or comparative approach that permits students to better understand their culture and those of other societies within the context of today's global world. Five, the student will be able to discuss Western and non-Western societies, which will enable students to gain a better understanding and respect of other people's worldviews. Six, demonstrate how the world's large-scale problems, including terrorism, ter <laughs> including terrorism, famine, ethnic conflict, and disease are interconnected and can be better understood by applying the holistic approach of cultural anthropology. Seven, identify features that distinguish human language from animal communication. Explain why it's important to include nonverbal behavior in the study of language and culture. Eight, we're gonna explain enculturation and how people incorporate children into their society. Discuss formal and informal means by which individuals learn their culture and cultural factors that influence an individual, uh, also age and gender-related behavior. We're gonna describe how culture, personality, and human psychology intersect. The ninth thing that we're gonna be able to do is identify and explain economic systems and how surplus is related to subsistence modes. Identify the characteristics of an economy based on capitalism. We're gonna discuss the effects of industrialization and some characteristics of industrial and post-industrial societies on today's global economy. The student will, 10, explain how anthropologists define marriage and family and identify some characteristics of nuclear and extended families. We'll also be able to identify social functions of marriage and some forms, and other forms of marriage. 11, we're gonna be able to identify basic types of social organization and explain social stratification. We're gonna describe how the concepts of race, gender, and ethno, uh, ethnicity are created and discuss their consequences. And lastly, 12, we're gonna be able to discuss religion and the anthropological perspectives in religion. We're gonna discuss the main types of religious practices and how religions help maintain the social order. And we're also gonna discuss how art influences culture. 
Those were the 12 course competencies. But let's go over the big questions, what we call the essential questions, what we're going to learn in anthropology. What are, what are anthropologists studying? So, this class will begin by confronting the questions of social and cultural differences, such as we will ask how other peoples and cultures have been classified, understood, and represented at different times. We will attribute popular representations of backwardness in the late 19th century theories in uh, biological and social evolution. We will investigate how anthropologists were able to offer and debunk these early theories by emphasizing the importance of culture, uh, also language and communication rather than skin, color, and race. We will then ask, how are we, sorry, we will then ask, how were anthropologists able to gain such first-hand information about other cultures? How did the paradigms change in, anthropolo in anthropological methods of field work? And what is participant observation? And how did that emerge? And how has it changed over the years? We, also we will also conclude by looking at the emergence of national ordering of human societies and how local relations of inequality define the global condition. How does anthropology or applied anthropology now play an important role in challenging these new social orders? And also, how did anthropology move from participant observation to supporting indigenous movements and developing an activist agenda? So these are the big questions that we're going to focus on when we talk about what does an anthropologist do? Like any Anthro, like any course, this course requires a textbook. Uh, the required textbook, as you can see, is William Haviland et al.'s 2013 Cultural Anthropology, The Human Challenge, the 14th edition, put out by Thompson Learning Wadsworth uh, Publishing Company in New York. The ISBN number, the ISBN-10 number, is 11339574200. I believe, and the reason why I chose this textbook, is that the text provides an excellent general discussion of the four subfields of anthropology and a detailed presentation of cultural anthropology. So, in this class you're going to have a series of online lectures that are given by myself and some of my colleagues. Uh, each week you will have a series of uh, online lectures and that will be accompanied by a reading assignment from your textbook and also supplemental materials. Let me read you the disclaimer about the supplemental materials. This course requires students to record notes from lectures, uh, also notes from PowerPoint presentations and our ethnographies, these video ethnographies, movies that we're going to watch. Additional readings will also be provided by myself. Readings, presentations, and films are illustrative and material discussion. Uh, and I'm going to read that again. Readings, presentations, and films are illustrative and discussed in texts and lectures. And these notes will be useful in the essays and examinations that you will be undertaking. So, on our Moodle page, you'll see that we have the classes divided into weeks. Each week has a series of online lectures, videos uh, conducted by myself and my colleagues. Then there is a ethnography, which is followed by a list of discussion questions that must be answered and returned to my email, um, my email uh, websites, my, my email to my email account. Um, then there's also supplementary materials, reading assignments that go along with the subject matter, and those have discussion questions as well. So we'll go into more detail about the breakdown of the class after we go over um, some other information. The grading for cultural anthropology is, is as follows. You receive 10% for discussion, uh, answering discussion questions. There's also 15% of the class for current events. Another 25% for a midterm examination, 30% for your student fieldwork paper, and 20% for the final. Let's go over uh, group activities in your discussion grade, which is worth 10% first. A portion of your our, of our class time will be devoted to formal or informal discussions of selected readings throughout the semester. 
you'll be uh, you'll be asked to answer discussion questions um, following reading assignments and video assignments. Um, your grade will be based on the quality and quantity of your participation in these writing assignments. Uh, further information regarding the discussions and your assignments will be distributed later on throughout the semester. Current events are worth 15% uh, of your grade. This is what I'm looking for when we talk about current events, and you can certainly read uh, and it's in your syllabus here. Uh, each student will be asked to find two current articles in journals, newspapers, or other media forms. What they're going to be asked to do is write a one-page summary of what is being stated in the article or the journal, the country in which this information was found, who was involved in this find, and comment on why the article is interesting or important to anthropology. To receive credit for your analysis, you must submit a brief one-page uh, typed paper with the title, date of the article, the news source, and a brief overview of the article. Each student will um, do two current events throughout the semester and must discuss one current event from either the four subfields of, uh, of anthropology. That includes archaeology, biological anthropology, linguistics, and cultural social anthropology. And please, no repeating subfields. The reason why we're under undergoing this assignment is in any field that you're going to study. When you uh, leave the university, you're going to be in a career and you need to, be keep, you need to keep relevant. So this assignment helps you go out and find new information that's changing and shaping our understanding of our culture and other cultures. So in this assignment, you're going to conduct uh, your own inquiry as to what new advances in methodology or new theories or new finds or new information that's being discovered about our society and other societies and that includes the four sub and it can include anything in the four subfields. Right. Midterm quizzes. Midterm examination is worth 30% of your grade. The midterm as you can see on your calendar is for this certain date. Again, I haven't made the date public aware, so um, we're going to have a midterm. All right. <laughs> the midterm will cover all materials covered in the assigned readings, lectures, films, and projects that will consist of a combination of multiple choice and short answers and essays. Uh, of course, uh, if there's any information regarding a review session or reviewing some of the material for the midterm, you can contact your questions to me directly on my email account. And I encourage that you have, uh, that you utilize the class discussion uh, chat session uh, to pose questions for your class to answer. Uh, I encourage class discourse amongst all those in the course. So we have access on our Moodle account for open discourse regarding questions or information that you may have missed in lectures and readings or videos. So again, I encourage you to post questions on our chat site. Our field work presentation and assignment, it's actually just a field assignment. This topic this year is ethnographic exploration in contemporary rituals in America. It is worth 30% of your grade. Let's go over what this fieldwork assignment con uh, is, constitutes. First, a ritual can be described as a cultural performance laden with symbolism, characterized by prescribed and predictable, predictable forms of behavior, speech, and actions. Examples include religious services, marriage ceremonies, funerals, fraternity and sorority functions, a birthday party, uh, what we're asking you to do for this assignment is one, attend a ritual several times if possible. Use some imagination and take advantage of New England's enormous cultural diversity. If you're not from New England, take advantage of the cultural diversity in the area that you are living in 
I know this is an online class, and some of you probably don't live in New England, so uh, use your imagination. Second, take field notes during or immediately following the ritual on the following features. One, the setting, the sequence of events, the behavior of the participants, the use of language, kinesics, and proxemics. Proxemics being the study of uh, the nature and degree and the effect of spatial separation between individuals and how the separation relates to the environment and cultural factors. The use of symbolism. Any other aspects that you might find relevant or merely interesting. Next, the third step is you're going to construct a mini ethnography of five pages which is around 1,500 to 2,000 words. Um, we are, throughout the semester, we've given you some mini ethnographies of some important anthropologists and their work. I, I expect that during the course, you've been reading the uh, reading assignments, these mini ethnographies, and it gives you a, a better idea of the information that we're looking for. Um, in this mini ethnography, it's to be typed, font size anywhere between 10 to 12 points, double-spaced, in which you discuss how some of the above features combine to produce meaning for the participants of the ritual. I'll read that again. You are to discuss how some of the above features that you record in your field notes combine to produce meaning for the participants of the ritual. Be explicit about how you determine what that meaning is and how you decided which forms of behavior were most important for understanding the ritual. How might you have expanded on this project if time had permitted. Please avoid vague, unsubstantiated generalizations and su uh, superfluous rhetoric. Make your ethnography as informative as possible. And this ethnography is due, as you can see in your calendar, at this date. There will be no presentation of the information since it's an online class. So most of your grade will be based on your mini ethnography. And it doesn't matter in what type of writing style that you prefer, um, as long as you cover the objectives that are stated in the syllabus. If you have questions regarding the ethnography, please do not hesitate to email me and ask your All right. Um, lastly, the last thing I want to mention about the ethnographies, uh, as uh, part of the policies at Plymouth State and NCC, we go over um, issues with uh, plagiarization. Since our ethnographies are your own research, uh, I don't think there'll be an issue with plagiarism. But if you do uh, make citations or you uh, cite other sources, make sure that you um, use either the Chicago or the MLA style. Please use a formal, recognized, academic writing style. All right. Uh, finally, the final examination. Uh, the final examination, as you can see on your calendar, is for, set for this day. Uh, this will cover all materials covered in the assigned readings, lectures, films, and projects, and will be preceded by, um, skip that part. Uh, the exam is cumulative and will consist of a combination of multiple choice, short answers, and essays. Regarding the essays for the midterm and the final examination. My essays are generally based off of our ethnographies that we will watch uh, accompanying the lectures. So what you'll see on our Moodle page is my lectures, uh, Paling 1, Paling 2, Paling 3 are the class lectures, uh, and then they'll have been accompanied by a video, Ethnography 1, Ethnography 2, Ethnography 3, and usually the essay questions are based on the discussions that precede the ethnography videos. So again, please be aware to do all, watch all the videos, the lecture videos, and the reading assignments, because all that will be covered on the midterms and the finals. As you can see on the syllabus, there is a grading scale. Uh, the grading scale um, is set in the syllabus. Go over that on your own. You don't have to go over that. Uh, you'll see that preceding the grading scale is the course calendar. Uh, be aware of the assignment due date, and uh, as you can see, it goes by week, month, day, topic, the assignment that's due, and the course objectives. As you can see, for the first week, 
Uh, the topic is Introduction to Cultural Anthropology. The, the reading assignment is Read Chapter 1 in Havland. We'll be covering uh, course competency number one in that, uh, that lecture. Uh, the next lecture, of course, is Culture and Cultural Change. Uh, so please read Chapter 2. And that'll cover course competencies number two, number six, and number eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure that you are constantly in check with your course calendar. Uh, if there's any questions, again, do, he, don't hesitate to email me or post a message on our Facebook, or sorry, I said Facebook, our Moodle web chat page. Um, again, the calendar is subject to change. Uh, depending on on whether I want to add or subtract anything throughout the throughout the course, um, you can go over uh, all the policies associated with the university that are part of the uh, syllabus on your own. Uh, again, going back over plagiarism, plagiarism is a serious violation of a student's academic integrity and the trust between a student and his teachers. Plagiarism is the act of a person presenting another person's work as it was her or his own. Uh, such acts of plagiarism include, but are not limited to, a student submitting uh, as his or her own work an entire essay or other assignment written by another person, a student taking word or word of a section or sections of another person's work without proper acknowledgement of the source and that material is quoted, a student using statistics of other such facts or insights as if they were the result of the student's efforts and thus lacking proper acknowledgement of the original source, paraphrasing of another person's unique work with no acknowledgement of the original source, or copying another student's work on a quiz or test. The academic sanctions will be imposed upon a student who is found to have plagiarized an academic assignment, including but not limited to an essay, an examination, a class presentation, or any written, written work submitted for a school publication. Our placement of the student on probation, a loss of total credit on the assignment, and placement of the letter in the student's file noting this violation. Other sanctions that may result from any other further incidents of plagiarism include expulsion, suspension, or expulsion from the college. Yada, 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 yada. All right. So we're all aware of the plagiarist, plagiarism policy at this university. Make sure you don't plagiarize. Please properly cite your own, uh, please properly cite other sources and please do your own work. All right. Um, some more information, background about your professor. Uh, I've been teaching intro to anthropology, intro to, uh, intro to archaeology for six years. Uh, I'm a student, I'm a PhD candidate, this might change this year, I might become a doctor. A PhD student at the University of Albany in the Anthropology Department. Uh, I'm an archaeologist, I study uh, and direct the, Ar the Hammond Tune Archaeological Project in uh, Homul, uh, Guatemala, which is in the Paten. Uh, chap uh, lecture 2 discusses my research and correlates that with the archaeology lecture. Um, I'm also the co-director of the Chiclastagua Archaeological Project in Nicaragua with uh, Professor Justin Lowry of George Mason University. Uh, we are studying early settlements along uh, the Pacific side of Nicaragua and their interaction with the Maya realm around 900 AD. We're interested in the economics, the social and political uh, structures that existed around this time in uh, what can be considered periphery of the Maya realm. Uh, my research at Hammond Toon focuses on the pre-classic period of the Maya. You'll get a lecture on this uh, again uh, in your second uh, lecture session. Uh, I am highly interested in the field and this course should be highly uh, entertaining. Um, Again, this is the first time that we're going to offer this course online, so there's going to be a lot of blunders, and I apologize for any inconsistencies that I have in my lectures or uh, any pauses like this that may be distracting. Um, again, uh, I hope you enjoyed the lecture, and I look forward to having you in this class. Please, again, be advised the best way to communicate through with me is through our online chat sessions and my email. 
So again, I look forward to instructing you in Intro to Anthropology, SO AN2210. Uh, the next step is our first lecture, which is lecture video number one by Paling, which will be preceded by an ethnography and a reading uh, assignment. So look at our Moodle webpage and follow the steps uh, provided. All right, thanks again. I'll see you in the next lecture.